Ron George, welcome to the show. Hi, Ken. It's good to be here. I mean, you're running for governor, right? I am. Tell me about that. Well, it wasn't something I aspired to. Uh, my business on Main Street Annapolis is in the shadow of the State House, and people used to ask me to go testify on business issues, economic issues. And I would go do that, and I realized there was a disconnect in understanding how to build a strong economy, how to build a tax base. And uh, I thought, maybe I should get involved. I went to talk about why the decoupling of the state tax was wrong, how it would hurt businesses, and I realized they just didn't understand. I had people from National Federation of Independent Business and Chamber of Commerce ask me to run for office, so I ran for the House of Delegates. I'm in the same district as the Speaker of the House. People told me I couldn't win. I just barely won the first time. And the second time around, after f serving four years, I ran again, and I came in way in first place. Uh, I've been able to resonate with the voters and be able to uh, explain uh, issues to them, and they find that they agree with me, and it's across party lines. I consider myself conservative, but I, I'm solution-oriented. I try to find answers uh, for what's going to work. I often fault Republicans for, uh, it's, it's okay uh, to, to take certain positions, but you have to have answers. You know, you have to have answers and solutions. And uh, you just can't leave it there and say, I'm conservative, you know. What would a conservative do to find an answer? And I've come up with good answers. I've been able to have bills that have had uh, co-signers, co-sponsors, uh, from both parties onto them. You'll find most of them are smart business issues, are uh, good government issues. Uh, and because of that, many people were asking me to run for governor. Uh, I would always say, you're crazy, <laughs> cut it out. You know, I've got a business, I've got a life, I've got my family, I love my, I'm a jeweler by trade. Uh, I, I, I make and create at the bench, and I have two sons who are helping with the business, and I love it. It's, it's just a beautiful feeling to, to work with them. Uh, I would rather be doing that. Uh, but there are a lot of problems out there, and I've always been the person who looks for solutions. It's just the way I am. I can't help it. When I was in New York City, and I was doing jewelry work, and I took on an acting work, I did a little acting on a soap opera and things, and I saw kids out on the street, runaways, pushouts. I just had to get involved, and I got involved in a, in a shelter there. Uh, it became very well known and did very well. Uh, just counseling for three years, kids off the street. I just couldn't, you know, go to work on a soap opera and come home and ignore what I was seeing on the streets. Uh, people pushed into prostitution and drug use and things like that. So I'm kind of across the board. I, I'm a person that's strong on economics and finance, but in a way that's supposed to, that can help people at all levels. Uh, my plan for governor is one that's very regional. I believe that you have to have a different solution for what's going to work in Baltimore than what's going to work in Prince George's County. Uh, you have to find ways uh, to make things work. I believe in building an economic base a tax base, a strong one in Baltimore City, and people say, why are you concentrating on Baltimore? You're a Republican. I say, you know, I don't get that. Uh, most jurisdictions, most counties are paying more money to Baltimore than they're keeping home. It allows them to keep their money home. Uh, I put an economic plan together that allows us to lower the tax rates enough to be able to encourage investment in business and create jobs in our state. I understand how that happens. I've spent eight years on the Ways and Means Committee. Most people, most Republicans, only last two years maximum. Uh, it burns you out. There's a lot of issues you have to study. There could be hidden fees or taxes in bills you don't know about, and you could look bad if you vote for them. People don't want that, you know. Um, so, you know, I work hard. I study the bills. I provide talking points and bullet points uh, for the people uh, as it comes to the floor. I argue things well, and because of that, I've been asked to run for governor uh, quite a bit. So I'd say, you're crazy, I'm not going to do it. And then I'd hide behind my wife and I'd say, I have one obstacle and she'd kill me. And darn if my wife didn't become one of them, you know, and want me to do it. And I, I thought about the fact my kids want to carry on the business in this state. And I thought about the problems of this state. And then it became personal, much more personal. And, uh, you know, I, I, I think that a lot of people are feeling the same thing I'm feeling. We want to pass on something that's successful and does well. How do you think you're going to tackle some of these tough problems that's different from what we have right now? Well, I can tell you, um, I've gone uh, to Baltimore. I've worked in the inner cities, as I told you. I do a lot of volunteer work, so I understand the issues. I've been out there on the streets. I've seen what the kids are going through. I've seen a lot of, uh, you know, how, how uh, what used to be people of hard work at every uh, income level, you now have at the lower income level a total breakup of families and things. So one of my ideas is just to bring the idea of the Harlem Children's Zones down to Baltimore, now the Baltimore Children's Zones, it, it, test scores go up. Uh, people are much more positive, they feel better about themselves, the attitude's sore, it's going very well, it's been proven. We need to design it in a way that works in those parts of Baltimore that have become incubators for crime. These kids have no place to go afterwards. 
people can criticize and say, well, that's going to cost you more to fight the crime and, 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 you know, get the gangs out and let these kids learn. And uh, you know what? What's happened in Harlem is you saved a lot of money because of the decrease in crime in those areas. So these are productive answers. These are not Republican solutions. And I think we can build bipartisan support for a lot of the answers. Build an economic base. Uh, the Baltimore Sun said that uh, Delegate George is the leader of the people running for governor and having a platform put forward. And, you know, some of those ideas were to get rid of the gas tax, lower it back down, and the rain tax. Uh, but to also have a good dedicated source that you cannot touch for the Transportation Trust Fund and how to build that and how to have a percentage of the existing the gas tax that was already there and how that goes to that and build an economic base. Um, I have a plan to do independent audits of agencies. I showed in an editorial in the Baltimore Sun a few weeks ago. I think it was September 5th, it was. I, I, I mean, August 5th, uh, so about a month ago now, um, that uh, there's a lot of waste going on. I showed how federal dollars tax uh, money that had come to this state was misused. I think most people hate waste, they hate misuse, they want to make sure money gets where it goes to. As a business person, nothing irks you more than to see wasted money. You want to make sure it goes where it's supposed to, it, it gets results, and there isn't waste. And I think that's very important. Uh, that doesn't mean cutting to programs. It, you, you make sure the money gets more direct there, you have more money for the program itself. And also, you can use some of that money elsewhere instead of for that waste uh, to help this state. Uh, get the tax rates down, but also good government bills. Uh, people, if they take an oath of office and they abuse their office for monetary and personal gain, and then they're convicted of a crime, they should get back what they put into the pension system, but after that they shouldn't get their pension for life. They shouldn't get their health benefits for life. Uh, bills like that I've had in the last two years. People, it's very popular, they poll very well, uh, but they get put in the drawer and nobody wants to deal with those issues. I think people want good government. Uh, I was the ranking Republican on the Campaign Finance Reform Commission, and we made it uh, so it's a level playing field for all, fair for all, got rid of the loopholes, made transparency. Uh, doesn't take effect until 2015. I wish it took effect immediately, uh, but they couldn't change it in the middle of an election cycle. A lot of good government issues out there uh, that help people. And, uh, and I know how to create jobs. The government doesn't create it, but you create an environment that's going to attract business here so we can create jobs. I want manufacturing jobs in Maryland. We don't get them anymore. Now, people will say, oh, they're going to China. No, they're not. They're going to South Carolina, Tennessee, and all these other places. You can go on the eastern shore of western Maryland, southern Maryland, and these little crossroad towns that have these little box buildings that used to be where there were 40 to 80 employees, they're gone. You know, 200 and less employees, manufacturing is gone. We're expanding the harbor. Uh, I, I mean, we're expanding the canal. And because of that, we're expanding the Baltimore Harbor. We're putting up bigger cranes. There's going to be bigger ships and more ships. Uh, CSX is putting new train depot areas uh, for carting it out of here. Guess what? We are doing nothing to attract import-export jobs. Those jobs will be in other states. They just bring it here to transport it. We should have them in our state. We are sitting right on the cusp of being able to be a very profitable state, have money for our needed programs, get rid of the waste, and create it much more business friendly and create jobs. I was looking at a stat the other day. It's on Department of uh, Business and Economic Development under the governor, DBED. And it showed that between 2007 and 2012, we had less private sector jobs, that's the last statistics we have, end of 2012, than we did in 2007. So Martin O'Malley has not really created jobs, only government jobs. You just do that out of, you know, orders, executive orders and increasing taxes and bills. That's not how you create jobs. It, you don't create jobs just saying we're going to give more people government contracts. You have to create an environment where the private sector can grow. And when the private sector grows, you have more people paying taxes. You know, it helps us all. And with it shrinking and our needs for transportation and education growing, uh, we're going the wrong direction. Uh, we're headed for a crash in this state. And we need a change. We need it now. These are positive answers. And I think they reach across party lines. Between now and June of next year, what do you need people to do for you to help you get to that spot? Well, you said June, of course, because the primary has moved up to June. And I think it's go to votronjorge.com. Look at my 10-point promise. We're going to be putting more of our economic plan out there. We only put a little synopsis on purpose at first, but we have a whole economic plan for the area. Spread the word. Uh, name recognition is important in a campaign early. Uh, people will say that I have lower name recognition than a couple other candidates who've actually been running for a couple years uh, in the primary, but their poll numbers have stayed the same, and I'm at even with them or higher. So I've just gotten into this. Nobody knew I was going to run until 
few months ago. And uh, so it's growing very quickly. Um, very positive uh, <laughs> response from people, uh, be it Montgomery County, Prince George's, Anne Arundel, I was up in Baltimore County, down to St. Mary's County, Western Maryland, been all the way out to uh, uh, Frederick and Hagerstown and, and, and to the farthermost re reaches of the state. Um, Eastern Shore, Lower Eastern Shore and all over. We're getting good response. It's a matter of getting to people and talking about it. So getting the name out there, uh, volunteer, we're creating a great, great network of volunteers across the state. Um, I spoke before uh, Young Republican Club, uh, actually it was Central Committees, I guess, for the Northern Prince George's, and I think they had 22, 24 people there. 14 of them right away signed up to help us in our campaign to help people. So when people are hearing the message, they're coming on board. Uh, I spoke before a women's club in Calvert County and they all signed on. Uh, it's, they've heard the other candidates already. Um, I think people want solutions. I give 100%. I don't know any other way. I mean, when I ran in the same district as Speaker of the House and I came way ahead of him in first place, the top three came in, I just, I speak to the issues. I couch them in ways people understand. I don't run from my values to try to attack more, uh, attract more votes. I, I try to explain them in ways that people understand and can help them. All right, man, one more time. At URL, we can contact you and see all your good stuff. Yes, uh, I am Delegate Ron George. I'm running for governor. You go to VoteRonGeorge.com, and you'll find our contact information right there, along with everything else. Thank you, Mr. Ron. Thanks, Ken. Thanks. <laughs>